It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Pain Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, who happens to be my father, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this September weekend? Feeling really good, Ryan. Just got back from Seattle, Washington, and that was a week before I was in London. No, actually, no. I was just here. The Northeast feels like Seattle and London right now. Hey, we've had terrible weather. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, if I wanted to live in London, I moved there. But I mean, I can't remember a time when we've had consistently such lousy weather, Bob. It's uh, and not everyone has the luxury that you have that you can just say, "Hey, I'll fly to Florida for the rest of the uh, year and enjoy good weather." So it's just not pretty. Well, let's bring the uh, listeners some sunshine, Ryan. What do you got for us today in, uh, on the show on pin, No Pain, No Gain? Well, you'll be happy to hear this, Bob. One of your most famous quotes or Bobism is, money doesn't buy happiness, but you can park your yacht up right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually true. Uh, there was a new <clears throat> survey done of thousands of Swedish lottery winners, and they found that actually lottery winners said they were substantially more satisfied with their lives than lottery losers. So there's been a widespread, I guess, misconception that winning the lottery often makes people miserable. That's actually not true. Well, you know, Rye, money doesn't buy you happiness, but it does allow you to enjoy your misery in some magnificent places. <laughs> That's an even better quote. So there you go. There you go. So speaking of the world of money today, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about those pesky rules of thumb. Yes, retirement investment planning is about customization. So Bob and I are going to discuss with you why rules of thumb just don't work. We're going to talk about being a contrarian is good. As always, Bob and I like to be against the grain in the financial services industry. We're going to discuss what is wrong with a lot of the conventional wisdom you hear when it comes to your finances. And we have an all-pain weekend. We have Chris Payne on the show, my brother, Bob's son, financial advisor here at Payne Capital Management. He's going to talk about a real retirement case that he worked on and talk about some of the things he did to make sure this couple was retirement ready. And we have our financial propaganda, where we're going to point out some of the biggest offenders in the media this week of propagating the worst financial advice to keep you on track. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about those rules of thumb. Bob, and you know, when it comes to financial planning, we've heard probably every rule of thumb out there. And as we know, they're usually not correct. And one that I always hear is that rule of 100, Bob. Do you remember the rule of 100? Rule 100 is a good rule, right? I mean, you take your age, take my age, 65, and uh, you subtract it from 100. And the remaining number is the percentage that you should traditionally have invested in risk assets like the stock market. Now, it's okay, a good so rule, but it's not a great rule. Well, in your case, if I do the math on that, that means 100 minus 65 means you'd have 35% at risk in the markets, which I would say seems kind of low given the fact that, let's face it, you know, you'll probably live to 90 or you know, maybe even close to 100 based on that last fiscal that you got this past week. <laughs> I plan on never leaving, Rye. So um, you know, that's, the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the news. But <laughs> the odds of that aren't so great. But I'll tell you what, I got a better rule. The, the rule for your asset allocation, that's really what it's about. It's about how should you allocate your assets between stocks and bonds and cash. Right. I like the A to B rule. You know, let's let's have a customized asset allocation, you know, because remember, asset allocation is the only free lunch on Wall Street. That's going to decide what your rate of return is, is how you're allocated. So, you know, I believe in, you know, the rule of 100 is a good way to start, but you need to have the A to B strategy, the A to B analysis done in order to understand the risk you're taking and what you should owe. Yeah. And I think another thing to add to that is that rule of 100 has been around for a long time. And the problem is, if you look at retirement today, we just talked about this, is you've got to plan for longevity, which means you can't be as conservative in your 60s, per se, as you could have been maybe back 20, 30 years ago when the, you know, when you're expected, your life expectancy was a lot lower. I mean, the big thing about retirement today is you need to plan for longevity. You, know, you have to plan for 20, 30 years in retirement. And that also 
is going to encompass things like more medical costs, more healthcare costs. So there's a lot more that has to be factored in. So that rule of 100 is probably even less relevant today than it's ever been. You know, right. I talked to you a lot about the uh, four P's, right? The, the four reasons why people fail to achieve their financial goals. And that second P is, is portfolio risk. And what we're finding is that the inverse is happening with the rule of 100. You know, people right. are 70 years old and they're subtracting it from 100. And they think, oh, I should have 70% in stocks. You're taking way more risk than you need to take to achieve your goals. That's why you need to run the projections. You need to see, you know, what the impact of that risk is. If we have another, not if, it's when we have another big bear market. Yeah, that's right. So it's not about too little risk or too much risk. It's about the right amount of risk. And that's what A to B does. Another rule of thumb that I hear all the time is the 75% rule, Bob, which says once you retire, you simply need 75% of the income you needed while you were working. That's just not true. Let's face it. It's not true, right? I mean, I've seen that in every financial planning article I've read over the last 45 years. It's always you're going to live on 70 to 80% of your after-tax income. You're set for life. Well, you know what? It's not 75%. It's 130% that people spend in retirement. You know, the baby boomers know how to live life. We're, we're enjoying ourselves. We want to spend money. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, I mean, you know, we want to go out there and, and, and enjoy those years of retirement. Yeah, and we're seeing that, right? I mean, it, it amazes me how many clients we have now in our 80s that are still taking like the best trip of their life now because we just, you know, we're much healthier than our parents were. We're living a lot longer, like we just said. And man, grandkids, vacations, all those great things you want to do in retirement are expensive. And I would say, yeah, better rule of thumb is maybe account for more, not less. Which brings me to my next rule of thumb, Bob, which is the rule of five. Do you know what the rule of five is? I don't, Ry. What's the rule of five? Well, let me enlighten you, Bob. It's on average, we experience a bear market or when the market goes down every five years. That's just like so not true. No, it's so not true. And the thing is, what people think about bear markets, they think of crashes. And crashes are extremely rare, even though we did have a crash in 2008, which you know everybody's still thinking and talking about. We had a tech bubble burst in 2000, which was a crash, so to speak. You know, the market was down almost 45, 50%. And then you have to go all the way back to, you know, 1929, you know, for a, a similar crash. Well, of course, that was down 89%. Crashes are extremely rare, right? But corrections are perfectly normal. You have, you know, two to three corrections a year, except for last year, we had no corrections. Yeah, that's right. And on top of that, we're in the midst of the longest bull market of, of all time, right? We're already 10 years into this. So, you know, there's an old saying that, bull markets don't die of old age. So you can't really use those kind of rule of thumbs. And we hear those a lot. Uh, the last rule of thumb, which I think is probably the most important, is the 4% rule. This rule of thumb that believes you can just take out 4% of your portfolio each year without running out of money. And as you and I know, it's much more complex than that when it comes to distributing your portfolio over time. Yeah, you just can't do a straight line analysis when it comes to financial planning, comes to your retirement, comes to having an income that you can't outlive. It's all about total return because you need your assets to grow to overcome that hidden insidious tax, right? You got to overcome inflation. Cost of everything goes up. Cost of living is going to double in 20 years. You have to make sure that your portfolio is growing. And that number may be taking out 3% or 4% or 5%. You need to run the numbers to know if you're safe. Yeah, that's right. And different accounts have different tax consequences, which means that you may have to take more out of some accounts or less out of others to get the same amount out because you have to pay Uncle Sam. And if you're thinking to yourself, I can't go by these rule of thumbs as well. I need to get a real plan that addresses my real needs. Here's a shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you are now famous total financial master plan. It's a full total financial review that analyzes everything. All you need to do is bring in your statements into the office. When they come in at the end of the month, put them in a folder, print them out on the computer. We'll analyze everything. What we'll do is we'll build you your own personalized financial portal where we can take a bird's eye view and look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is that income gap going to be? How do you replenish that income? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap. We're going to look at diversification. 
What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof or protect your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. There's so many hidden costs in portfolios. I know it's shocking. In those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products, we're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio and show you how to reduce it. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to tie it all together and we're going to determine that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now we have been perfecting for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? All you need to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, the Chief Investment Strategist and the Managing Director here at Payne Capital Management. Now, Mark Twain, very famous author, he's also a self-proclaimed specialist in how not to get rich. One said that October is one of the most dangerous months of the year to speculate in stocks. Now, the others, according to Mark Twain, are September, July, January, April, November, May, basically every month of the year. So actually, the largest drops in market history have started in September and occurred in October. So it's not surprising that many investors have voiced their concerns that we're entering the most dangerous months of the year, September and October. Other concerns are, what will be the implications of the midterm elections? Will it lead to the impeachment of the president? And what about these trade wars? See, many investors have concluded that the market has nowhere to go but down with all this negative news. Of course, if you look at the data, things are looking really good. Most U.S. indices remain near or at near all-time record highs. Earnings growth is exceptional, growing at 20% plus year over year. The economic data remains consistent with moderately strong growth, and interest rates are still too low to provide an attractive alternative to the equity market. So my message for investors, whether you're in the optimistic camp or in the concerned camp, is to always remember that the markets don't typically do what everyone expects. Over my 40 years, I found that the markets will do whatever they have to do to confound the majority opinion at the time. The obvious trade is typically the wrong trade. So ignore the noise, stay invested, be patient since we're in a big, booming bull market. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, do I have a portfolio that's appropriate to my family's goals, to my dreams, to my risk tolerance? Why sit there and wonder when you can know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call or text today for a complimentary review. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. 
It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, as you know, are simple men. And of course, we like to keep it simple for you, give you some common sense tools, advice you can use to make sure that you're on your path to financial freedom. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's a simple baseline to get you started on the retirement planning process, and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Just a great way to get started with the retirement planning process. Download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888-888. 888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, being a good advisor isn't really about winning, I would say, a popularity contest or just saying the same things that everyone in the industry says. And I would go as far as say that we probably pride ourselves on the fact that we're usually against the grain when it comes to what we would call conventional wisdom. Because what we find is conventional wisdom is not always that wise, if that's a fair assessment. And it's always tough to be a contrarian. I mean, when you're in the financial services industry or when you're in any business, to be a true contrarian means you have to go against the grain about what everybody else is thinking. And a lot of times you'll walk into a room, you don't have a contrarian view unless you know there's someone in the room that agrees with you, which then again makes you not contrarian, right? So it's <laughs> it's a very difficult place to be. But there are certain areas when it comes to like investment products where we definitely have a contrarian opinion, right? We don't believe in any product, right? There, there are no good products and there's no bad products, right? What kind of products are there? Yeah, it's what's appropriate and not appropriate. And one that I think gets probably abused, if I can use that word, is the use of annuities in portfolios. And you know, we, we speak out against a lot of the ways that some of these annuity products can actually be sold to you for your portfolio. Well, you know, that's the thing. Well, we're, we're very fair in assessing those products, but you know, when you're a salesperson that only sells annuities, it's like being a hammer, right? Everything looks <laughs> like a nail. So that the only thing you sell are annuities, then, you know, the solution every time is going to be, well, let's put some more money into that annuity. There's lots of other things that you can do. You know, sometimes it's appropriate, but you know, yeah. there's no investment product that's appropriate for every situation. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of times with annuities, which this is one of my favorite quotes, Bob, that you've said over the years, is when you buy an annuity, it's kind of like Chinese food. It tastes so good going down, but you just feel so empty later. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's a bad feeling, you know, when you call about your annuity a year or two later and you find out that you you can't get your money out, that you're paying a lot of fees that you didn't agree to or know about. Yeah, you really got to do your due diligence before you, you know, plump some money into an annuity contract. Yeah, and I would make a couple comments about that because, again, it's not like they're not always a bad idea, but what usually happens is you find that you're getting this quote unquote guaranteed stream of income. You're getting a guaranteed five, six rate of, percent rate of return. It sounds so good, but when you break it down, it's actually not true. And a lot of times you're giving up your principal in retirement which can be very risky to give up your hard-earned asset, especially when you might need it the most. So there's a lot of ins and outs there. It's not to say it's good or bad, but you really need a hard look to make sure that's appropriate or not appropriate. You know, Another thing that we see a lot of is the appropriate amount of risk for if you're retired or you're looking to be retired soon. A lot of times we find out that advisors are recommending that you take way more risk than you should be taking. And this is a, a sad uh, fact of our industry is that stockbrokers get paid better to sell equities than they do bonds. So typically they're they're telling you to buy more risk products simply because they get paid better and that's you know it comes into that suitability rule you don't hear you know they're not fiduciary so they're they're not doing anything necessarily wrong according to the law but according to me personally you know that's abusive. The thing is you want to make sure that you have only the amount of risk you need to take to overcome inflation, and overcome taxes because the only two guarantees in life are death, taxes, and inflation. There's three guarantees, right? So there's three there guarantees go. in life. So, you know, having the appropriate amount of risk is critical. And 90% of the time, Rye, when we review someone's portfolio, they're taking more risk than necessary. That's the, yeah, and I think, that's the sad, ugly story. And I think right now, more than ever, let's face it, we're in 10 years of a bull market. There's a good chance that you have an overweighted position in your portfolio in equities, not just equities or stocks, but in US stocks. And it's so important, I can't stress this enough, 
you want to make decisions when the wind's at your back because when the music stops, market goes down, it's way too late. So this is the time that you want to look at your risk, figure out what kind of risk you have in the portfolio and if it's time to adjust. Do it when things are good, not when things are bad. The other one, Bob, that I think comes up a lot and I think we're really against the grain on is having way too much money sitting in cash. I mean, there's a good chance you're probably sitting with a stockpile of cash. After 2008, you may have gotten burnt with the markets and never got fully invested. And it might sound great to say, well, I have all this cash for protection, but you're really losing money. Well, that's true, right? The thing is, you'd go back over the last eight years and your four-year bond came due twice in the last eight years. So you would have gotten 400, 500% better return just simply buying a four-year bond rather than sitting in cash, not even to mention that the equity market's gone up 300% over that time frame. So yeah, cash is appropriate. You need an emergency fund. You need to be able to pay your bills, right? You can't, you can't pay your bills with relative performance. But I think you have way too much cash if you look at your overall strategy. So, Rai, how do you know if you have too much cash? I mean, do you, do you look at each portfolio? Or do you got to look at every portfolio in concert? How do you do that? Well, I think that's one of the key, and that's why I love our 360 portal, where we just load everything into the computer, all of your different statements, so we can actually see across everything how much cash you have. And that's what I always find is you're always surprised when you see it across the whole picture, how much cash you're really sitting on, because it's always more than you think. And a lot of times it can be a couple hundred thousand. And that's a couple hundred thousand that could be generating significantly more income, Bob, because let's face it, even with rates going up, cash is still trash. Even at 2% interest rates, that's not that good. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. No, it's so true, right? Yeah. Cash is trash and appropriate investments are appropriate only for you and, and your risk tolerance. And if you're thinking, I need to know, you know, I need to know if I'm being financially healthy. I need to know if my portfolio is appropriate you know, to my needs, to my risk tolerance, to my family's goals. I need to know if the fees I'm paying are way more than I should be paying. I need to know if I'm positioned to succeed. And here's your opportunity to know. If you're one of our next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, Brian and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, this is a full holistic review where we look at everything. All right, we're going to review everything and help you to build your own personal strategy that allows you to achieve those goals with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as only a fiduciary can provide. We want you to put all your statements into a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, text us or call us, set up an appointment because we're going to break down your portfolio into the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost and income. You know, diversification is really about being diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. Fees are something that, you know, we have so many hidden costs buried deep in the prospectus of that mutual fund or in that big fat annuity contract. What we want to do is make sure that you're not being overcharged. I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged and it really would bother me to be overcharged by my own portfolio. And lastly, income. You know, we have that income gap that we need to fill while we're retired or while we're preparing for retirement. And we need to have an income that's dependable, repeatable, and gives us a lifetime of income we can't outlive. And lastly, we want to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my firm has been working on and perfecting for over 40 years for four decades. We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. You can call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track. Simply text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844 844- 752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. We'll run our total financial master plan. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no game. Financial Radio.
It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, who would you find out there this week in the profane world of financial propaganda? All right, we got some good news. And I've got some bad news. You know, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of the Great Recession, the beginning of the Great Recession, which was the big financial crisis just 10 years ago. Three quarters of Americans, or 74%, who were surveyed have changed their financial habits as a result of those events. Now, the good news is nearly half of these people are more cautious about overspending, right? 38% say they now avoid debt as much as possible. A okay. quarter of those surveys said they limit the number of credit cards they have simply as a result of having gone through that financial crisis. That's the good news. The bad news, 7% said they no longer even invest in the stock market. And we found from Gallup that 65% of Americans owned stocks You know, 10 years ago. That's down to 55%. So 10% of former investors are on the sidelines and they're missing out on the greatest bull market in history. Well, that's why it's also called the most hated bull market of all time, because I think what a lot of us don't realize is, you're right, it's been a very underinvested market. Most of us have missed the boat on this. And after 2008, you know, I think we all have some scars from that. And there's a good chance we didn't get fully back into the markets, which is amazing. And this magnificent run in stocks essentially has been missed out by, by many, many Americans. It's just a wild statistic, Bob. You know what's even more amazing? is that another survey showed that even though the S&P 500 has gone up, you know, two to 300% over the last 10 years, half the individuals surveyed think that the market is the same as it was in 2008. And there's actually 20% of the population, only 20% of the survey, that think the market's down from where it was in 2008. Wow. So this is where, you know, the financial media can be very dangerous to your financial health. They do everything they can, Rye, to keep you on the sidelines, to stop you from investing or from selling way too soon. Good point. That's why we always call out the financial propaganda every week. And I think the good news here, Bob, is it's not too late. You know, If you feel like, hey, I put all this money in cash, I'm looking to get back into the markets, but now the market goes up and up and up. I know the day I put my money in the market, everything's going to collapse and uh, I'm going to feel like, you know, really bad about that, of course. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel like a fool. Well, you know, it's not too late, right? The economy is doing really, really well if you're properly diversified and it's not an all or none solution, right? You want to have money in things like fixed income. You want to have money in alternative asset classes like real estate, internet, global stocks. So, you know, if you look at it from a bird's eye view, there's a lot of great places to put your money and it's not too late and it's not an all or none proposition, which I think is really critical. No, you're right, Ryan. You take baby steps, right? No decision is a decision. So you take your money that you need to invest for your retirement. You put some in now, you put some in a month from now, some in a couple of months later. You know, there's different strategies to get you invested in the greatest bull market in history. That's right, which we're still in. So keep that in mind. Bob, so our alma mater was in the press again, and it's not good press. Uh, what did Mother Merrill do this week? <laughs> well, in all fairness, they're owned by Bank of America now, so I guess we can blame Bank of America. But they've come out with a new mandate that they will no longer sweep its customers' cash into money market funds, but it will instead will move it into their deposits at affiliate so banks. Wait, straight, Rod. Right? Just as interest rates have been raised by the Federal Reserve, and people can actually get a yield now on money markets, Merrill Lynch accounts are not allowed to have that return? Well, so what they're doing is they're going to put them into accounts that are paying, let's call it around 0.25% instead of putting into accounts that are paying closer to 1.77%, which unless you call your advisor at Merrill Lynch and tell them to move it, they're going to simply put you into the lower yielding investment, which I would say that's not really acting in the client's best interest, Bob, if you uh, had to ask me. Well, you know, you're a fiduciary, so you wouldn't have any option whatsoever. You would be mandated, not just by law, but also by your conscience, to give your client who's paying you, you know, the best return you could possibly get and not do what's in the best interest of the bank, do what's in the best interest of your client. It's hard to believe in this day and age, especially after we saw so much corruption after 2008, that a lot of these things are still going on, but they are. And I think that's why it's really important 
to make sure who you're working with by law has to act in your best interest. And it's not a knock against Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, but the bottom line is by law, they don't have to act in your best interest. They don't have to act in the capacity of a fiduciary. So it's important to find out who you're working with. And as we always recommend, make sure they are a fiduciary because then they have to act in your best interest. You know, Rye, that's just a really sad article because when I worked for Merrill Lynch, when you worked for Merrill Lynch all those, all those years ago, the number one guiding principle that hung on the wall of every office was the client's interest must come first. Sounds like with Bank of America, the shareholder comes first. Well, I think the more of the story is don't put your money at Bank of America, but maybe own the stock. <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to start working with a fiduciary, someone who has to act in my best interest, and I'm not quite sure I am right now, here's your shot to get a full, unbiased, holistic review. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review that analyzes everything. All you really need to do is just bring in those statements. If they come in at the end of the month, put them in a folder, print them out off your computer. We're going to go through all of it for you, and we're going to build you your own personalized portal where we can view everything in one space. We're going to be able to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at things like fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? You know, do you have a lot of exotic annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products? We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money in your pocket. We're going to look at income. Are you getting a low yield on your money market fund? Can you re- increase the income on your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to fill in that income gap and increase the income so you're retirement ready. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? It's been a 10-year bull market. If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? Is your portfolio bulletproofed? We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio. Then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine that very critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement We'll create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, and there's no cost, and there's no strings attached. But of course, there's no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my partner and my son, Ryan Payne, and we're the Paynes of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. It's no pain, no gain financial radio, and Bob and I, we like to give you simple, common sense advice that you can use on your investing, your planning, and that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a great baseline to get you started with the retirement planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Again, just a great way to get started with your financial planning. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. 888. Download it for free. Text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can do that on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And as always, yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. You simply go to bebullish.com. You can even download the show, sign up for our newsletter, check it out at bebullish.com. And most weeks, you can catch me or my colleague, Michelle McKinnon, on CNBC, Fox Business News, with regular market commentary, just keep you up to date with what we think is happening in the markets. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And like every week, when we get a couple good questions, 
We answer them right here on the show and help us out with that. We have our producer, Mr. Mark Haywood. For today, I've got a couple of mailbag questions I do want to share with you guys. This one comes to us from Junior. Junior is on the Upper East Side. He says, Bob, I've dabbled in trading options in my IRA over the years, but I've never had time to master it. I'm retiring in a year, and I feel that once I have more time to spend on it, I'll be able to meet all of my retirement income needs this way. Is that a reasonable assumption? You know, Junior, this is a great question because, you know, options are an investment product that was originally created back in the mid-70s to hedge portfolios. Of course, you know, Wall Street, they like you to trade. So they've taken something that was a tool to hedge your ownership in, in stocks and bonds. And now they've turned it into a trading strategy, which will allow you to lose all your money in a short period of time. So, Rye, you know, when you, when you talk about options, I mean, do you know anyone uh, who's mastered the options market in your career? Bob, I mean, it, it, and it hits home because I lost a lot of money in options early in my career, and I still have the scars because, to your point, with options, which were initially to be a hedge, well, you don't realize a lot of option strategies, you can lose everything, and I've been there. It's not pretty. Back in the 70s, Rye, I worked in downtown Philadelphia, and one of my colleagues was a world-famous bridge player who kind of mastered the options market and actually made money 10 years in a row by a strategy that where you actually short or you sell a put option. All right. Now, what happened was we had a two-day bear market in 1987, and not only did it wipe out this poor man's portfolio, but all his clients' portfolios, they got put hundreds of millions of dollars with stock, which they had to pay for in seven days. And wow. when they didn't have the money, the firm turned around and sued them all for the money. They took him out on a stretcher after having a nervous breakdown. So you know how I feel about options. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that definitely puts a damper on, I think, Junior's excitement to trade options. And I think that also is another good point there is some of these strategies, they could work for quite a long period of time, maybe five, 10 years, and then bam, just like that, you could lose all your money. So I think it's also be very wary, even if someone has a track record, you still really have to understand the underlying risks you have in any sort of portfolio strategy, because that's a perfect example, Bob, of a strategy that did work. For I me, mean, 10 years is a long time, but man, just one stroke of bad luck. And I mean, things can be treacherous pretty quickly. Market is a wicked place, Rye. When it figures out a winning strategy, it does everything it can to unwind it. Well said. All right, guys, let's move over now to George. George is in Short Hills, New Jersey, and George writes in to Ryan. He says, Ryan, I'll be turning 70 at the beginning of next year, and I'm annoyed that I'll have to start taking money out of my IRA because I won't even need it. I'm sure you have some tips for circumventing this rule. What are they? <laughs> Unfortunately, the IRS wants their money, and they're going to get it, George. Unfortunately, you didn't talk to us a couple of years ago where what we like to do is, especially if you're in your 60s, is what I call... IRA distribution planning. Because let's face it, when you turn 70 and a half, you have to take your money out of an IRA, Bob. And we always call this the ticking tax time bomb. So a lot of proactive planning can help. But I think there are some strategies that George could use here. Well, there's a great strategy, Rye, that he could uh, contribute his required minimum distribution. The money he has to take out of, of his IRA and give it to charity. So he can donate that money to his favorite charity and it's not taxable. So you don't have to pay tax on that income. Otherwise, it's ordinary income and you'll be taxed at the highest bracket. Yes. And Bob, I, that is, I, I have to say here for the new tax rules, that's a huge strategy. So right now, if you make charitable contributions every year and you have to take mandatory distributions out of your retirement plan, it's a no brainer. You should definitely talk to your advisor, whether it's your financial advisor, tax advisor about doing this, because to me, this is just a home run that everybody needs to know about. Now, there's one caveat, right? You're limited to 100,000, but most people don't have a $100,000 RMD in any one year. But not only can George make that contribution up to 100,000 to his favorite or all his favorite charities, but his wife could do it as well. So you could actually, you know, distribute 200,000 that's uh, not taxable. Yeah, absolutely huge. And this is the kind of great information, Bob, I have to tout us for a minute <laughs> that we provide on this show because I don't think most of us know about this, this strategy right now. And it's definitely one to consider, especially if you're taking your distributions. And the other thing is you want that IRA to keep growing. And uh, so if you don't want to gift that money to charity, the other thing you want to do is distribute out of your IRA because you can do what's called a distribution in kind. You don't have to sell your investments and distribute cash. You can transfer 
your biggest winning investment out of your IRA into your personal account, which is what we recommend. Because if you take out what's up the most, you leave what has the most value in the portfolio to continue to reforest that account. And Rye, you've done this for years. You have clients who've been distributing money from their IRAs over the last 10 years, and the IRA balance is higher now than it was 10 years ago. It's a great strategy. And again, I think it just comes down to you want to be very strategic about your retirement income planning and how you distribute your accounts over time. And that's the key when you're working with an advisor. On a scale of one to 10, in terms of being financially organized, how does Junior and George sound to you? I think George and Junior have a long way to go. No offense. I think they're close to a three or four, Bob. It's low on that scale. All right. Now I have a question for you. On a scale of one to 10, where would you like to be in terms of being financially organized? Of course, you'd want to be a 10. And if you want to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next 10 callers who have saved at least 200000 for retirement. And if you are one of those lucky folks, here's what we're going to do for you. We're going to create your own 360 financial portal. This is a total holistic view. Not only will it give you a virtual real-time update of what you're worth or what your portfolio value is, it's also going to display all your goals and how you're progressing towards those goals. And you drop in anytime you feel like it. If you're one of our next few callers, what we're going to do for you is we're going to evaluate your entire financial picture. We want you to take your statements that just came in the mail, put them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, call or text us. We're going to take your portfolio and break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, cost, and income. You know, the last thing you want in your portfolio is overlap. You don't want to have the same investment over and over in every different mutual fund or ETF or portfolio strategy. You want to be truly diversified to make sure that you have negatively correlated asset class that give you the highest probability of having the least amount of risk and the highest rate of return. Fees. There's nothing worse than finding hidden fees in your portfolio. You can't find them. They're hidden. Let us do it for you. And lastly, income. We want to be certain that you have that income that's so critical to fill that income gap while you're retired or while you're preparing for retirement. We want to create an income stream that gives you a repeatable, dependable income stream that gives you a lifetime of income that you can't outlive. And lastly, we want to tie it all together for you into one total financial master plan, answering that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my firm has been perfecting now for close to four decades. That's right, folks. For 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with the least amount of risk and as high a probability of success as only a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over 200,000 and you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left. Call or text us now at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. To make sure you're on track, simply call or text 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no game. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts. And rest assured, the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Rye. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage. And not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH That's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And as always, Bob and I are simple men, as you know. 
and we give you simple practical advice that you can utilize. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a great way to get started with the financial planning process. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, bullish to 555-888, bullish to 555-888, what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive just to get started with the financial planning process. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show, and we have a special guest for this part of the show, my brother, Bob's son, financial advisor, Chris Payne. What's shaking, brother? Hey, brother. How you doing? I heard uh, you say that you and dad are, are simple, but you forgot simple but handsome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always encourage people to go to BeBullish.com just so they can see Bob's hair. You know, he's truly the, the most handsome of all the pains. Well, you no know what, about Chris? That. I know you have a favorite brother, and now I got to decide who if I have a favorite son. You know, keep up the compliments. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so right, Chris, with that, this, as you know, flattery will get you everywhere. That's true. That's it's sure. not that hard. It's not that that's hard. True. So, Chris, this is our spotlight segment. Each week where we take a real financial plan, we dissect it and we look at what people are doing right with their planning, doing wrong, and how we help them get on the right track. And you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give us the rundown? We can talk about some of the different things that you did to really get these people on track for retirement. So, right, you hit the nail on the head when you used the word planning because that was the absolute key in this case. This is a couple in their uh, their late 50s, early 60s that are very close to retirement, looking to retire in the next two to three years for both of them. And one of the big concerns that they had is that they had no written financial plan in place. So they had no idea based on what they'd saved and what they spend. They basically were afraid that their money was not going to outlive them. So you know, we went and met with them and sat down and just got a really solid understanding of what their budget was. And the, the big concern with them was, you know, they thought they were spending way too much money for how much money they had put away. So, you know, right away, we went through the whole plan, you know, went through if they were to retire in the next two to three years, living out, you know, past age 95, if they would have enough. And, uh, you know, sure enough, the plan looked great and uh, they're not spending too much and they've got plenty of money put away. So, you know, I think right off the bat, that was a huge relief to them. I think you could see the, the visible relief in their eyes of the fact that they had they had saved enough money or would be able to save enough money between now and retirement that they would have plenty of money to live on. So, Chris, they were doing everything right, so they don't really need your help. Uh, I didn't say that, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, two things. First off, you know, looking at this, Chris, I, mean, that, I think that is a very therapeutic process to go through is just sit down, and it sounds like what you did with this couple – and just go through and figure out what the budget is. You know, it's kind of, you never want to go there, but once you go there and you actually start looking at what you're spending, it's just better to know than not know. Exactly. What well, is because people tend to take more risk when they don't know. They think that, uh, oh, I haven't saved enough, so I've got to really, you know, gamble almost in the markets to, you know, just feel better that I might be able to achieve my goals. But then you can't sleep at night knowing you're taking too much risk in your portfolio. Exactly. And that was definitely the case here. They're looking at their portfolio. You know, I would say it looks like just like 99.9% .9 of the portfolios that come through our door and the fact that they were just taking way more risk than they needed to, you know, closer to being 80% in volatile equity type investments. Yeah. So I mean, if we had another 2008, Chris, they would have suffered uh, pretty measurably. I would say pretty measurably and, and probably, you know, would not be able to recover, you know, just based on the fact that, you know, the majority of their nest egg was invested like that. And looking at this right now, I mean, this is a couple million dollar portfolio and have this much money at risk. I mean, you would have seen hundreds of thousands of dollars in losses in a year like 2008. And when you're this close to retirement, who wants to go through that? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a typical case of somebody in the financial red zone, right, where they're taking more risk than necessary and didn't even know it. Yeah. And one of the things that we noticed right off the bat is like a lot of our clients is that a lot of their money was in various 401ks from previous jobs. So they, they didn't even have an idea of how they were invested just because they had simply put the money away and completely, not completely forgot about it, but really didn't pay much attention to it. So what we were able to do is we were able to put together our famous three page comparison spreadsheet and just take a look at exactly where they are today and make recommendations about, you know, where they need to be. So, you know, one of the things that we looked at right off the bat was the fact that most of their money, as we said, is in equity. And really what we could do is take a lot less risk, add some money over to bonds and be able to substantially increase the amount of income that they're getting every year. 
Yeah, Chris, I'm looking here on the spreadsheet. You can increase their income by $26,000 a year to a total of $55,000 a year. And that comes in regardless of the market goes up or down. I mean, that adds a huge security blanket to this portfolio. Yeah, exactly, Ryan. You know what? That $26,000 increase is going to cover two months of their expenses. So they were basically able to add an additional two months of covering expenses just by making some simple adjustments in their portfolio. How do they feel about that? I think they were pretty amazed and pretty blown away. <laughs> well, it's nice having that certainty when you're in retirement. I mean, it's uh, it's one thing when your statements are going up every every month like they did in 2017, but 2018 has been a different story. And last I checked, you can't buy lunch with relative performance, Chris. You need cash flow when you're in retirement to pay your bills, you know, to enjoy your life. And this is uh, phenomenal how much cash you can increase and how much income you can give these folks by reducing the overall risk of the portfolio. Exactly, Dad. And as I always like to say, you get a better outcome with more income. I love it. Wow, Chris. <laughs> Quite the poet and financial <laughs> advisor. I like that. I'm not um, going to quit my day job. <laughs> and if you're thinking to yourself right now, this is the kind of review I need. I need to know what kind of risk I'm taking in my portfolio. I'd like to increase the cash flow so I'm not completely reliant on the whims of the stock market. We still have a couple slots left. If you call us right now and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, myself, Bob, and my brother, Chris Payne, will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. Simply bring in your statements, put them in a folder, print them out from the computer. We're going to load everything into our 360 portal so we get a bird's eye view of everything. So we really know what your risk looks like. This couple had no idea what risk they were taking. So we're going to look at all those critical components, diversification. You know, Where is the risk? If the market goes down like it did in 2008, are you protected? If you're not, how do you protect yourself? We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable in retirement, and you need to fill in that income gap when you stop working. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by twenty-six grand a year. How can we help you optimize or increase the income on your portfolio? And we're going to look at those pesky portfolio fees. Yes, there are some hidden costs in your portfolio. We're going to point it out to where they are and show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And then we're going to tie it all together, just like we did for this couple, and determine that really critical question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing these strategies now we've worked on as a family for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. Here's your opportunity. Just call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, no strings attached, but no plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Wow. Another great show. And I cherish these all pain, no pain, no gain radio shows. It's just nice to have all the pain boys together. It's no house of pain, no gain now, right? <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Chris. We appreciate it, brother. Right. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and dad. <laughs> I'd tell you, I don't know who's more charming now. You know, you guys are both in the running. The most charming <laughs> pain. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I think I'm the most charming pain. <laughs> right, well, have a good one from mom. We, Chris. <laughs> well, great show, guys. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.